But so far, I th I'm pretty happy with uh, particle systems getting that to work. That's pretty cool. I wish I had used particle systems earlier. Like, there's so much cool stuff that you can do with particle systems. So right now, I'm just doing like like a simple missile trail, but. What's up, everybody? Axe Wizard here, uh, back working on my game. It's been a few days for me since I worked on it last. Um, I remember fighting with the background a bunch, and I think I also made a debug mode. I did, yes. And I was working on weapon placements and stuff. So there's a few options of where I can go from here. So I'm trying to decide what I should work on next. One thing I noticed is that I lost my ship rust effect. So if you look on my old uh, ship sprite here, placeholder, big ship. You see the second frame has like a little booster effect. Now I don't know if I want to do that same kind of thing with the AI generated art sprites because it, this I think if I just copied and pasted like this and just threw it on a sprite it would look really it would look really weird. So what I was kind of thinking would be kind of cool to do would be maybe play with some particle effects um which would also be a challenge for me cuz I haven't really messed with particle effects before. So and uh I think one, I think an easy thing that we can probably try to do is maybe, uh, I also loaded another sprite for projectiles. I have like this, this rocket projectile, um, which I think we could set up to fire rockets and have like a little trail coming from the rockets with particle effects. I think that would be a good introduction to it so maybe we should try to get that working and if it's super easy then i can just get the the ship thruster stuff working too so i think that's what i'm gonna try to to tackle now um oh i also loaded in a, a sprite for the cursor and i was gonna update that so if we go here to our create event uh let's see this is where i was setting my cursor so if we go gen cursor and save this there we go now we have an AI generated cursor and this looks pretty cool I actually kind of like this cursor a lot this targeting reticle that we have now this is awesome so yeah oh man I'm so glad this background stuff is done I, I, I I'm glad I took a few days from working on it too holy cow all right let's uh let's uh, pop open the good trusty help manual. I still haven't updated Game Maker, so I'm not going to update the help manual as well. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look up particle um, and particles. So let's learn about particles. Let me clear this out and then that way it doesn't keep highlighting the word particles. So let's see. For complex things in Game Maker, you would normally have an object and create instances of that object around the room, which is kind of like what I've been doing. Uh, however, for graphics effects, this can be expensive as every instance comes with a cost in processing due to the variables it contains and the codes it has in different events. So you can reduce this cost by turning to tile map layers and asset layers for drawing your graphic needs, but those are generally static and cannot be changed or moved around much. However, there is one other option for drawing fast yet versatile graphics uh, effects in your games, and that is to use particles. Makes sense. That's what we need. Particles are a graphic resource that uh, have certain properties which are defined in a particle system. These properties cannot be manipulated directly for individual particles, but are changed throughout through, through the code that is used to define the individual particle system. No. The individual particle in the system it belongs to. Okay. These are very useful for creating beautiful and flashy effects or subtle and discrete ones like explosions, decals, rain, snow, 
star fields and debris in a game. Hey, that sounds like what we need. So cool. In a game without the CPU overhead using what instances has. Sweet. So the basic setup follow three steps. Create a, create a particle system. Create particle types. And then create emitters. Okay. So particle system. The particle system is like a container that we will use to hold our different particle types ready for use. We use code to define a series of visual aspects and behaviors for our particles. And then we place them in the container so that we can take them out and use them whenever and wherever we need later. Okay. Then next step is create particle types. Particle types are the graphic effect itself. You can have many different types, each with their own range of colors, alphas, sizes, and movements, but it's important to note that you do not have control over individual particles. You define a series of parameters and the particle will be created to have a random spread of behaviors chosen from them. That makes sense. So create emitters. Emitters are an option that can be used to burst or stream particles from uh, within very clearly defined limits. That sounds what we need. So basically for my rocket, we can just put like a emitter in the bottom. So as it's going through the air, it can just be, be popping out all these particles. So cool. Uh, does it give us any examples? Probably not. Let's... Uh, Oh yeah. Oh, I was, <laughs> I was looking at this, uh, shortly after I did the background stuff. Cause I was thinking about doing, doing particles and, and I wanted to, to see how it was done. So this, this was, I don't remember much of this. Uh, yeah. So this little demonstration here, like can shows what particles and stuff can do. So this is custom particle shapes. Here's like a basic particle effect. So this is probably something that we can we can use. Uh, looks like you can also that looks like a kind of an explosion or something. Pretty cool. And you can make a here we go. It's like I, I have like my rocket with like particles going across. That's awesome. So here's what we're gonna do. So we got debug stuff. We've got camera controls. Uh, we've got animation control here. I might just throw particles in between here. Particle stuffs. So the first thing we need to do is particle system create. So I think we're just going to do, um, I wonder, can we use the same? I wonder if like I have to create a system every time I want to use a emitter or if it's like a global thing, I guess I should actually read stuff that would be handy. So let's do, let's look up particle system. No, there's a guide using particles. Cool. Uh, creating a particle system. Okay, so they recommend doing it as a global variable. That's interesting. You need to find a particle system and give it a name so you can use it. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object. And I'm going to create... I'm going to name this object or OBJ controller. Now, what the controller is going to do is that it's going to manage all of the global scoped things I need to track. So when I create my particle systems as a global variable, if I make it global, that means I can access it uh, anywhere just by referencing global dot whatever. Uh, so that means I can just define it once and then anytime I need to use it, like w with a rocket or something like that, I can just use that, that particle system. It's also going to be used, uh, this, this controller object is also going to be used for basically everything that I want to track with the game. So for example, how many kills we've got, how many money we've made, like how much money we currently have, um, uh, you know, uh, whether we're saving or, or loading a game, um, Typically how I use my controller object is when I have my main screen because right now we only have one room and this is just sort of our, our, our testing room, but when the game gets farther along, we're going to have a main menu and I typically set that object in there because what you can do is that if you look at this object here, you can check this and you can make it persistent, which means that instances of this object will persist between rooms. 
So my first room might be like room main menu. And then when I click, you know, new game or whatever, and it starts off, it, it transitions to another room. This object controller will still exist and it can track, uh, again, all the stuff I need and also manage uh, all the things I need, such as navigating between rooms and stuff like that. So that's typically how I use my OBJ controller. A lot of people have different ways of doing it, um, but that's just typically what I do. So in this, I'm going to use you do a create event and I'm going to say define some particle systems because I'm going to use a few different particles. Um, I know we're going to do like the, the the rocket trail ship thruster stuff. I might be able to make shields uh, like impact and stuff work with particles. Um, that could be really cool. Um, also explosions like when a when a th bullet hits a ship, we can do particles with that too. So I, I like where this is going already. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste. So they're creating it on a layer though. I don't know if I want to do that. So let me, let me just try something on my own here. Cause I've, cause when I was a younger programmer, I tried to just copy and paste code and, 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 and leave it alone. However, now I have to copy and paste code and use it as a template and then write my own code. So it works for me. So let's do global. Uh, so they, they do a capital with that, which makes sense. I do like that. So we can do P system. Uh, I'm going to do, oh, let's see. P sys. And then what do I want to name this? Actually, you know what? I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to do camel case instead of a uh, snake case. So P sys. Um, so P is for particle. Sys is for system. I'm going to do missile trail equals part system create. I'm just going to do create. I don't want to do create layer. I just want to create. Now, does this need any arguments? It does not. So we just created it. So now that we created it, awesome. We can define a particle type. So now we can do part type create. Oh, okay, so we can have multiple types for one instance for or, or, or for, for one system. So I'm just going to do, yeah, I'm just going to do uh, P system then for particle system. So we got a, a particle system create. And now what we're going to do is define some particle types. So I'm going to do another global uh, P so we're going to do P type um, and I'm going to say missile trail equals part um, type create. Is that what they had? Yeah. Part type create. So now you have a system and a particle to put it in, but you're not ready to create your own setting effects. You need to define properties of the particle, how it looks. So let's see part type system create so now how do we okay so there's a bunch of stuff now so particle one part type and then we define what this is okay so maybe we might uh we might just name this just p missile trail then okay and then what we're going to do is let's look at some code defines a particle so we got shape shape pixel this is for the size interesting so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to bring this into my code here and again i'm going to comment this all out boom 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 there we go so let's see. So part type shape. So let, let's look up that function really quick here. So if we go part type shape. Mm. 
So we have a few constants for the shapes that, that we can use. So it starts out with just pixel. We can do disks, square, lines, stars, circles, ring, spheres, flare. A harshly, uh, a harshly glowing point. Looks like an actual star in the night. Oh, here, it gives you, uh, gives you a little demo here. That's awesome. Spark, explosion, cloud. We probably want to use cloud for the for the missile trail. That could be cool. Flare. I like that. Okay. We can do cloud or smoke. Uh, I'm probably going to do smoke. So let's do PT shape smoke. So let's do that. So uh, let's see. Define uh, characteristics of our particle. You know what? I'm just going to combine this because it'll make more sense. Because I'm going to keep having multiple particles. I don't want to like define a bunch of particles and then define a bunch of stuff for every particle. I just want to have like the particle defined and then all their attributes changed right after another. And their characteristics. Characteristics. I guess that is how you spell it. I don't know. Whatever. So what we're going to do here is part, type, shape. And what we are going to do is uh, we're going to do global P missile trail, which is what it needs, right? This is the instance particle type ID. Yep. So we're doing our particle type and we're going to do shape smoke. PT shape smoke okay cool and then the next thing we got is part type size so we're going to do global p missile trail again so the size minimum and the size maximum so we don't want it to be too large because it's only uh I mean, maybe pixels will probably be better because this is a this is a, a tiny thing. We'll we'll try it out. Let's just do three minimum, five maximum. Uh, size increase. What is that? So let's go back to particle types, and then we're doing size, right? Part type size. make the particle increase or decrease in size over its lifetime. So I think we probably want to increase slightly because like the smoke will kind of fan out like as you go. So I think that makes sense. So let's in, let's increase it by, I don't know, like 0.01 for now. And then for the size uh, wiggle, I'm going to put zero because I don't, it, what does that need? Size wiggle. How much should randomly be added or subtracted from the particle's size per step? So I'm just going to keep that zero. So I think that should be okay there. And then what else do we want to do with our particle? Alpha, uh, particle type direction. Hmm. We want the, the direction to be dynamic. I think that's going to be controlled by the emitter, though. So let's look up that really quick, though, because that is important. This function is used to determine direction of the particle when it's created and can be also used to make the particle increase or decrease direction over its lifetime. Um, okay, you can also set wiggle factor. I think that's probably something that we're gonna wanna do with our emitters though, right? Let's look at particle emitters. In an area on screen, given form, they can also either create Okay. Emitter burst. Particle type. So I'm going to say part type direction. I'm just going to set this to be like everywhere. Global P missile trail and direction minimum, direction maximum, zero, 359. 
direction increment. I don't know if we want that or not. This is probably what it's set to set to by, by default. So I think we'll just comment that out for now. Um, for color, tell you what, we, we have a particle now. Um, does it have, we also need to specify the, the lifetime. So let's do part type life. So we're doing global P missile. And what, and what this will do is this will make it so that it, uh, expires after a while because we don't really want it to, um, to like last forever because the, the, the screen would quickly fill up and just be a nightmare. So it's going to last for a random amount of time. So I'm thinking that they should last, I would say between 60 to 90 steps, which is roughly like from a second to a second and a half. Um, and then, yeah. So there we go. We have a particle system defined and we also have a particle uh, type defined. Now we need to define a uh, some emitters for our particles. So now we need to create a emitter. So let's go back to particle emitters. Particle emitter create. This function is used to create a new particle emitter in the given particle system. All right, so let's do this global uh, p emitter, and we're gonna say uh, equals part emitter create, and we are going to p system. So we just need to do global dot p system because it needs the particle system. So there we go. Now we have a emitter. So now how do we use the emitter? So if we go back to particle, uh, probably want emitter stream. So this needs the particle system, the index of the particle emitter that we created, the particle type that we want to do, and then the number of particles to create each step. Okay, this seems this seems pretty pretty doable so far. So to test this, uh, what I'm going to do is we need to make it so we can fire rockets. So to do that, we go to our scripts and we go to SCR weapon here. Um, let me make this bigger so we can see all the fun stuff. So I don't need to make changes to the weapon type here yet, but what we do need to do is I'm going to do another case weapon. Um, I don't know what I should call this. Just weapon uh, rocket launcher. I don't know. Yeah, we'll let's do weapon rocket launcher. Uh, oh, I also need to go to my, my type script. And I need to add this as a, a type here. So weapon, not web hob, weapon, <laughs> rocket launcher. And we're going to set this to be, uh, I'm just going to say rocket launcher. Okay, so now we have this type added. So now we can go back to our weapon script here that we were wanting to do. So we have that good. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all of this stuff. And then I'm going to set it so that we weapon type primary projectile type. What projectile types do I have? Explosive. Look at that. I was thinking ahead. The weapon sprite that we're going to use, did I get any other weapons? I think I did. I think this was the one I was going to use to launch rockets. So we'll do gen weapon three. Uh, the projectile that we're going to make is going to be projectile rocket one. We, we don't want this to fire all the time, so I'm going to set this to be 120, so you can only fire it like every two seconds, which is still a lot, but, you know, whatever. 
I'm going to set the projectile speed to start out at uh, like 8. And then I'm going to set the expire to be something stupid long. Because I, I want to, when I fire my rocket, I basically want it to just like, it's not going to be instantly going max speed. It's going to be start out slow and then it slowly speeds up as it's, as it's doing its own uh, acceleration. And depending on the rocket, you know, I might want this to be, to last a little bit. So I'm going to say just for funsies, we're going to set this to, see what's 60 times five, 300. So roughly, uh, roughly uh, five seconds. I think that should be enough for it to have an impact and, and do stuff. So the damage, I'm going to say for initial impact, I mean, I don't know. Why is this all weird? Uh, I'm going to go back and fix that because now that really bothers me. I'm surprised I, I left that in there. I didn't notice it. There we go. So damage, I'm going to say damage is five to ten for now uh, i'm probably going to fix it later but you know it is what it is so there we go so now we have a weapon rocket launcher okay so now what i'm going to do is that in my ship i'm going to swap out one of my cannons here i'm going to swap this out to be a rocket so weapon rocket launcher save okay so it's going to create a projectile we also need to be able to handle different types of projectiles too don't we hmm okay uh let's see i'm starting to get a lot of stuff open here so let's go let's close all but this and then i want to look at my object projectile here so what are we doing? So determine, right, gotcha. So step. So I'm gonna have to, to make some behavior specific to, to the projectile. So if we are a rocket, speed forward. And we probably need some sort of max speed for that as well, but I think I'm just going to not cap the speed on it for now and just see what happens. So if we are a rocket, speed forward. Um, so if, uh, what is the variable that I created here? P type for projectile type, which is now confusing because now we have P type as like particle type too. I might have to change that, but if P type, um, equals and i'm going to say uh weapon no it was projectile type explosive i might have to tweak this later so i'm going to add a to do uh not all explosives may be rockets handle this at some point okay so if p type is projectile type explosive then speed i want to plus equals something like i don't know point uh two every step so it's gonna speed up um maybe i might do point oh oh three just just to spice it up so save and then also Speed forward and emit particles. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say uh, part emit stream. So what we're going to do here is we are going to do. Does, should this be in the, in the create event? Number of particles to create per step. So this says to me, this should be in the create event. But if we do burst, I think that just does it once, right? Okay. 
So stream, like you set it, you set your particles to stream and it just does it until like the instance is destroyed or it's told to stop streaming. And then for burst, it just does it once. But if I put my burst in my step event, I should be able to just do it um, um, every step. So I'm going to say part emitter burst for now. And then once I iron this stuff out, I might switch it to stream and I might move that into my create event. So for the particle system, we're going to do global dot uh, P system for the index. I think this is the, what is it? What is this? The emitter emitter ID. Okay. So we're going to do global dot P emitter. For the particle type, we're going to do global dot p missile trail. That was our particle type, right? Um, let me just go back and look. Where's my object controller? Yes, it is a particle type. Okay, maybe I should rename that p type missile trail. I think I will just for consistency. So let me do a we're going to do P missile trail here. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste this in and then we're going to change it to P type missile trail. Replace. And then we will do the same thing here. Uh, we only did it once. So we'll just do P type missile trail. There we go. And then the number of particles to create. I'm just going to say, just create 10, 10 particles. Um, so yeah. So in theory, if I, if I start this game now, we should be able to launch rockets. Oh, that's a big gun. <laughs> All right. Nope. Particle emitter burst. P missile, P type missile trail, not set before reading it. Interesting. Oh, because I didn't add global, con I didn't add object controller into my room. So it never fired any of that code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the room. Oh, uh, cancel. Uh, go back to my instance layer. I'm going to add the, uh, the controller to the room. I'm also going to move it towards the top. That way it's the very first object that, that is created. There we go. So now we should be able to fire this this stuff. Whoa, that was weird. You see all that stuff on the corner there? Um. So how do I? So that's interesting. It does a lot. That's not what we want. So I think I'm going to change this back to shape pixel for now. And how do we set it to follow burst emitters and moving objects? One of the most common implementation of particle systems of all particles that emanate from behind a moving object, such as a smoke trail on a rocket. Achieving this effect in Game Maker Studio requires a burst emitter to be placed in an object's step event. Perfect. So I have to specify the emitter region. Gotcha. Okay. 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 That makes sense. That's the part that we were missing. We can, we can now stop panicking now. So let's go to projectile here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to just comment this out real quick and just do it myself. Part emitter region. So I wonder, does, does Game Maker let you do multi-line functions? Because I find this to be a lot easier to read for longer stuff. It looks like it allows me to do that, so that's cool. Because this, like, for for this would normally go like way off the uh, screen, but if you can break out your your arguments to a function or script in multiple lines. You know, it, it's a lot easier to to see that. It looks like it handles that, so that's fantastic. So we're gonna do part emitter region. So we're gonna need to specify this stuff here. So we'll do global dot uh, p system. 
we're going to do the global.p emitter that we're using. And then we need to specify the minimum x, maximum x. That's interesting. They did x and x and y and y. Normally they do x, y, 1 or x, y, 2. But I think it's because it's a min, max range. Uh, I'm just going to put x, x, uh, y, y. Because I want them to just create the particles like right, right at the end. So um, we might have to do a, a little bit of tweak to this. But I just want to get something working and then we can iterate from there. So then the shape, what does the shape mean? I'm just going to do what they did and just say zero, zero. So I might condense this one down uh, to a single line because it's not going to be too much longer, I don't think. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to spend all the time messing with this. So if we set this now and run it, Hey, it kind of worked. It did work. That's amazing. Kind of. Okay. So we have a stream of uh, particles that don't do anything. So what we want to do is we want to go into our particle system and spruce that up a bit. So I think the life might also be lasting a, a bit long. So... I'm going to say 10 to 30 for now. If we need to, we can change that around later. So um, part type direction, we'll go that. Uh, part type speed. We'll do global.p uh, missile trail. And we're going to say the speed minimum. I'm going to say, I don't want to move very much. So I'm just going to say 0 0.1. And then the speed maximum is going to be 0 0.2. Uh, speed increase. I'm going to put 0 because I don't want it to increase at all. Speed wiggle. I might put 0 0.2. I don't know. See what happens. So let's save that and then run it again and then see what happens with our our rocket so if we boom hey that looks a lot better look at that we got we got uh rockets that's pretty cool nice that actually looks great i think that's what we needed uh i don't i don't think does it have a way to randomize the colors i know it does so let's look at that next uh, I think we can also do like a alpha fade as well. So let's look up at what they did earlier. Blend. Uh, particles should blend together for an additive blend effect. I think I'm going to do that as well. So part type blend. Let's say global.p type missile. And we're going to set this to true. And then let's see, part type, what does autocomplete give us? Color mix, look at that. Let's do color mix. So we're gonna do global P type missile trail. And we're gonna do, let's see, let's do C gray and then we'll do C white. So Game Maker has a bunch of built-in colors that are saved to to various uh like c gray c white these are all built-in colors you can also define your own custom colors uh if we wanted to but i'm going to work with that so let's see what that does now so i added the blend and i also added a color mix so let's see how that looks now i don't really notice any difference but then again i am colorblind so what if we do c uh dk gray dark gray save Let's see if it does it now. Come on. I don't notice any difference. Okay, we'll try absolute. We'll do C black. See if that does anything.
I don't notice that that's doing anything. So maybe we don't have the right thing. So maybe, well, let's look up what that function does. Part type, actually, let's just go down here. Uh, part type, color. To be a single color for total duration of the individual particle. What's color two do? Oh, this function can be used as a two color gradient for each particle. First color is what all particles start with. Second color is the one which the particle will end with. And a smooth gradient change will occur. Oh, okay. Neat. So we don't need this color mix. What we want is we want part type uh, color one and global P type missile trail. And then the color that we want to start with is going to be Hmm. Let's do C yellow. And then what is color three? Second color is the one that will be blended halfway through its lifetime. And the third, so I think what I'm going to do for this rocket trail is I'm going to start it out yellow. Second color is going to be orange and then it's going to end going gray. So I think that will be pretty cool. So let's do, I'm just going to copy and paste this two more times and we're going to set this to be color two color three i'm going to change this to c orange and then i'm going to change this to c i'm going to do dark gray so now let's run this and see if this works any better oh uh oh i'm i'm a dummy i see what they want now i'm silly okay so part type color three there's the I gotcha. I understand. We don't specify each color with each function. Color 3 allows us to specify three different colors. Derp. C white. No, no. C yellow is what we start out with. And then C orange is the middle. And then it's going to end on C dark gray. So if we save this and run it now, should work, right? All right, let's do it. Oh, it works. It looks awesome. I wonder if I should change it to end on, on C black though. C black. Save. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like that a lot. We did it. We made missiles. Heck yeah, man. Look at us go. And those rockets fly pretty cool too. And I, I, I like the way that that looks. That's pretty cool. I don't know if it's creating the rocket where it needs to go though. I, I guess it is. It's just because we're, we're moving, I think. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> Got a big old rocket launcher on here. This is great. Nice, dude. We are rocking. Cool. So now that we know how that works, I think we can do we can do our rocket trail. But I think before we get to that though, we're going to want to know where to place them on each ship, just like we're going to want to know where to place weapons on each ship on each ship so i think the next episode i'm going to tackle or start to tackle defining kind of ship types because the things that we're going to want to be able to, to define is um let me go up to my ship here uh, let me get rid of particle stuffs so we're not doing that on this ship there we go so i'm going to put a to do up here to do uh, work out ship type stuff. So what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to define how many weapons a uh, ship should be able to have. And we're gonna do that, I think, by like establishing weapon slots. So uh, define weapon slots uh, as well as what type of weapons each slot can use 
So I think we'll probably have to do some sort of weapon classification stuff for it as well. Um, because, you know, say for example, I've got like uh, six, uh, six weapon slots on a ship. So if we pop open paint here, you know, say I've got my cool, uh, awesome cruiser 55,000 space deluxe awesomeness right this is a, this is obviously a super high detailed uh sprite now we'll do that there we'll do this there boom here's one wing here's another wing here's this here's that uh boom All right so you get the idea like we have a ship okay and the ship uh, can go has a certain amount of slots on it. So say if we do like this is a this is a big slot. This is like a, a medium weapon slot, and this is a big weapon slot. So let's say our ship has uh, two weapon slots, like light weapon slots, like right here, and I'm gonna say like right here instead. I think that looks better. So we can define where these weapon slots are, and this will determine like where the weapon's gonna be placed, which is gonna be handy, but like for example, if you have a light weapon slot, you shouldn't be able to like set a huge rocket launcher on a light weapon slot. That's not what that's for. So I think you can have like medium weapons like up here maybe. And then, you know, for your for your big stuff, uh, you can maybe have like one big weapon slot back here. So you've got like five weapon slots and you can swap those out as needed. Um, you know, maybe maybe we'll, we'll even allow uh, more weapon slots. So you'll have, you know, four light weapon slots instead. So that's what I'm thinking of, of how we need to do that. So we're also going to need to define those types and, and stuff like that. So... And then as well as the, the ship specific stuff, uh, we'll also want to be thinking forward ahead in the future because we're gonna have stuff like, you know, how much cargo can a ship hold? Um, what's the speed of your ship? So similar to how we did our weapon script down here where we basically, um, pass in the weapon type that, that that we want and we return all the stuff that needs to be set we're going to do something similar to that but for the ship so i think i'm going to do that in the next episode to work that out and then that way we can do the the ship thrusters too but so far I th i'm pretty happy with uh particle systems getting that to work that's pretty cool I wish I had used particle systems earlier. Like there's so much cool stuff that you can do with particle systems. So right now I'm just doing like, like a simple missile trail, but it doesn't seem to look right when it's, what's the origin I have on my missile on my rocket. It's set to be centered. I wonder if I should set that like back here, if that would look better. We'll just keep it middle center. It's fine. Yeah. We'll just keep it centered, but yeah, we got particle systems working and that is awesome. I'm still not happy with the shields, so I might, you know, since we can define a region, I wonder if we can just do like a, a, a particle, like uh, when uh, a projectile hits a ship and it deals, uh, it deals, uh, it deals damage to the, to the shield. If it will just have like a shield of like a, you know, the, the hit being dispersed on a shield as opposed to like direct hull damage. I don't know, but there you go. Particle systems done. Woo. See you in the next episode.